I want to talk about diversification, and broadly speaking, diversification means not putting all of our eggs into one basket. What it means is buying different investments that all have a possibility or where we have a strong expectation based on analysis uh, that the investment will go up over the long term, but it doesn't move necessarily together one for one in the short term. So for example, bonds and stocks, commodities and stocks, real estate and stocks largely don't move together necessarily on a short term basis, but over the long term we have, may have positive expectations for, for these uh, over the, you know, at a certain point in time. And by mixing assets together that don't move together perfectly in the short term, but that where we have an expectation that they'll go up over the long term, we end up uh, benefiting mathematically from what's known as diversification. And when we chart, for example, the return versus the risk, and we use as a measure of risk standard deviation, which means how, you know the volatility of the returns, how far it deviates from our average, we can see that by mixing in, for example, historically by mixing in bonds with stocks or commodities with stocks, we end up creating an environment where we're able to capture more return for the same amount of risk or we're able to reduce the amount of risk for the same level of return. And if we look at the following exhibit, exhibit that at the bottom um, we begin to add riskier assets. So at all the way at the bottom we end up having just very low risk assets and at the very top of the curve it's, uh, it's fully a, it's all risky, it's all risky assets. But at the very bottom when we start to add the risky asset to the low risk asset we end up increasing the return while decreasing the risk. And that's something that takes place mathematically between assets that aren't very well correlated. And these types of charts have been drawn in many situations when historically bonds have been mixed with stocks, for example. Now, assets that don't move well together at certain points in time, as more and more investors buy them at the same time, their correlation might increase. So if people start to think of bonds and stocks and put in money into bonds and stocks at the same time every year, then their correlation, their price movements would start to uh, move together. But historically, this has been uh, observed and what we have to ask ourselves in this situation is, um, first of all, do we believe that the assets that we're going to mix together have, do we believe that they're going to rise over the long term? And if we don't, then there's no point mixing them in the first place. Secondly, do we think that they're going to move together in the short term? Is it, do they, are they influenced by the same fundamental factors? And do the same investors hold the assets? And the fact whether the same investors hold the assets is actually quite important because correlations between different assets over time have increased as um, the same investors have bought them. So for example, real estate um, and that's very linked to industry in a certain city might actually be more correlated in terms of price performance to what happens in that industry than you would otherwise expect. So for example, the New York real estate market might be more tied to the New York to the stock market uh, in the U.S. than you would otherwise expect. Real estate in California, if it's being bought by a certain group of investors, may end up having more uh, to do with how that group of investors is doing than you would otherwise expect. So that's worth, worth being aware of. And over time, correlations have tended to increase between different types of asset classes as similar investors have diversified across them. So in other words, if, some, if a group of investors was now buying bonds and stocks, the correlations between those two might increase. Or if certain investors were diversifying using the same type of real estate, the correlation might increase. And one might have to look a little bit further to get the same diversification benefits. But the bottom line is in investing, where we can't be sure what happened in the short term with volatile assets, mixing assets that don't move perfectly together in the short term can improve our risk and return profile and obviously also makes sense just from the simple perspective that we shouldn't be putting all our eggs in the same basket.